And all right, everyone, it's about 8.30 here on the East Coast. And as always, we'll get our call started on time. My name is Azer Cole. I'm a Citizen Empowerment Coordinator here at American Promise. And a huge thank you to all of you tuning into this call tonight, or maybe you're listening to the recording afterwards. Either way, you're stepping up to save our democracy. So thank you. And the purpose of this call is to really inspire you about, about our work to get big money out of politics, to inspire you to come to the National Citizen Leadership Conference, the NCLC, and Lobby Day on June 22nd to the 25th in Washington, D.C., and continue the training process for an impactful Lobby Day. You can go to the NCLC website, which is www.citizenleaders.us.us to learn more about the conference and to register. And just one more time, that's www.citizen, singular, leaders, plural, dot us. This is the second in a series of calls geared to having the most dynamic and exciting lobby day possible. And each call builds off the last, and we've got a really great one planned here tonight. So I'll repeat this later on in the call, but if you have already had a meeting scheduled, please let me know. Send me the time, the location, and the member of Congress and or the aide, if it's an aide you're meeting with, the aide's name and the name of that aide's member of Congress. So you can send that to me by email, and we're doing that so I can loop, loop folks in as appropriate. If you're geographically close to someone, we don't want people to be double booking meetings at lobby day. My email for those who don't have it is azorc, it's A-Z-O-R-C as in cat, at AmericanPromise.net. And if you're not yet in an APA and you do want to set up a meeting with your U.S. representative or senator, which I hope you do, please write me first to let me know the meeting you want to set up and I'll let you know if someone's already setting up that meeting or if you can be the liaison and go ahead and set it up. On the call last month, we heard from award-winning author Francis Moore LePay, co-author with Adam Eichen of the book Daring Democracy, Igniting Power, Meaning, and Connection for the America We Want. She talked about turning feelings of powerlessness into hope, hope which we trust has gotten you excited about the NCLC Lobby Day and meeting with your members of Congress. And on this call, we're going to be talking specifically about how to schedule a meeting with your member of Congress on Lobby Day on June 25th. Our guest speaker today is Florida Congressman Ted Deutsch's scheduler, Alex Roca. She'll give us an insider's look into how to effectively schedule these meetings. So while she's talking, be thinking of questions that you might have. Then we'll actually hear from APA member Cynthia Esposito, co-founder of one of the newest American Promise Associations, or APAs, the New York City APA, who will share her experience in setting up a meeting for Lobby Day. And finally, we'll open it up for any additional questions on the NCLC and Lobby Day, have an overview of the training and coaching calls we'll provide in May and June during the NCLC itself to make Lobby Day as impactful an experience as it possibly can be for everybody. But first, I just wanted to start with this. The Congressional Management Foundation does trainings for congressional staff, and they also do research with that staff. And when staff were asked what had the most influence on a member of Congress who had not yet made up his or her mind on an issue, they asked about emails, phone calls, petitions, handwritten letters, and even visits from paid lobbyists. But the most effective means of communication was in-person visits from constituents. And let me just read from the summary. Direct constituent interactions have more influence on lawmakers' decisions than other advocacy strategies. In three surveys of congressional staff over a 10-year span, they found that in-person visits from constituents would have some or a lot of influence on an undecided lawmaker. And our lobby day is all about these in-person visits from constituents, the most effective form of communication. And it's why we're so delighted to have Alex Roca on the call tonight with us, who is going to tell us how people can set up these meetings. It's, it's what she does professionally every single day. Um, Alex Roca is the executive assistant to Congressman Ted Deutsch in Florida's 22nd district and has served in this role since Congressman Deutsch entered Congress in 2010 
working from the Boca Raton office. Alex covers scheduling and meeting preparation needs in both Washington, D.C. and South Florida. And Alex, before I turn it over to you, I just want to give you an idea of the people on the call. We're talking with people like Scott Groom in Brooklyn, who's organizing his community members around the issue of money and politics and plans on taking the momentum gained from Lobby Day in June back with him to start a chapter in Brooklyn. We're talking with people like Jenny Potashnik, whose APA in St. Louis just helped win a citywide local resolution in favor of the 28th Amendment, and people like Ellen Greenbush and Nancy Gurney, who've had meetings with both their Democrat and Republican members of Congress in Port Clinton, Ohio. This is the kind of people that you're talking to. And Alex, just before I turn it over to you, I'm actually going to quickly introduce Sam Daly Harris, um, who is the fantastic citizen coach who's responsible for a whole lot of the structure of support, which American Promise worked so hard to deliver. So Sam, I'm going to turn it over to you just to say a couple quick words about the upcoming calls, which I know you'll talk about later in the call as well. Sam, thanks for being here. Well, uh, yes, we have calls coming up at the end of next month. This month is about how do you get a meeting. And next month will be about uh, what uh, is the agenda for a meeting. And then in June, we'll have another call that will look at um, uh, the issue of, of what to, to, how to practice your meeting. And let me say one thing uh, about Congressman Deutsch. Uh, Congressman Deutsch is the member of Congress that includes Parkland, Florida, where the horrible shooting occurred. And so that issue of money and politics and gun control is so interrelated. And he's also the co-chair of the House Climate Solutions Caucus uh, with Republican Carlos Corbello of Miami. And that's another example of an issue where money and politics really thwarts serious progress, in fact, in this case, on climate change. So um, I'm excited to hear uh, from Alex Roca. And, and Sam, I know you've worked with a number of advocacy groups. Can you just talk a little bit about some of the differentiating factors between groups that work really well and groups so, that don't sorry. seem to is see Alex the not, Is Alex not on? Uh, so I am... She's not on right now. Um, she's oh, that's different. Meant to be on. Yep. So oh, I'm, well then, sorry. Then I'm can we go to my section? Questions. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Are you going to text her and check? I just on that a quick email. Yep. Okay. Great. Okay. Sorry, I didn't realize what was going on. So here, I'm going to do. We're just going to change the order, and I'm going to do my section, which was at the end of the call, and my section. The goal is to outline our commitment to preparing you to have really successful congressional meetings on Lobby Day, the 25th of June, and beyond. So here's some of what we will provide, and I think this would be really uh, uh, important to look at, especially if Alex doesn't make it. Um, I'm the so training- sorry. Oh, no problem. So let me stop, and we'll go right over to you. Alex, thank you, thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm so sorry. I'll, I had an emergency at home, and thank you for the email. That is okay. Um, I, everyone is very, very happy to be here, and I'll just really quickly introduce you again to the kind of people that are on this call here, and then I'll turn it over to you. Um, you're okay. talking with people like Scott in Brooklyn, who's organizing his community members around the issue of money and politics, plans on taking the momentum gained from Lobby Day in June back with him to start a chapter in Brooklyn. You're talking with people like Jenny Potashnik, who's APA in St. Louis, just helped win a citywide local resolution in favor of the 28th Amendment, and folks like Ellen and Nancy in Port Clinton, Ohio, who are having meetings with their Republican and their Democratic members of Congress. So that's just an idea of the kind of folks that are on this call. And Alex, I'm really happy you're here. Everyone's really excited to hear the insights you're able to provide. And thanks for being here. Pass it over to you. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, So basically, uh, 
I, I'm not sure what it is that you guys really need from me, except I can tell you the the, the more notice you give schedulers when you're making your request, your request, the better it is. Um, most of them um, have a form that's to be filled out. Um, every member does this differently. The congressman has on his particular website request for a meeting form that gets filled out and then that gets sent to me as soon as they hit send. But a lot of times people call our office and want to make a schedule. So I've given people my email address so that they can email me directly. I, I like to deal with people directly. Some schedulers don't want even to talk to anybody and they want you to go through their um, format of, I guess, a generic scheduler email address that they'll provide you. Um, what I can tell you is the meetings are no more than 15 minutes. Groups are normally about four to six people at most because the members' offices are very, very small and they're holding multiple meetings at the same time. Uh, most of the time what they want to know when you're making your ask is the name of the group um, or the foundation, what it is, the topic of discussion, what date uh, you're looking at, and um, my best suggestion to you that a lot of people make mistakes on is go to the Democratic um, WIP Hoyer's schedule for uh, the voting schedule for 2018. If you pull up the voting schedule, you'll see the actual calendar of when members are in town. The mm. rule is the rule is usually Monday through Thursday or Tuesday through Friday. On fly-in days and fly-out days, most members do not want to meet with you. They're, they're trying to either start their week or they're ending their week with their staffers. Uh, fly-in days, either Monday or Tuesday, the votes don't start until about 6.30 that night. There are a series of votes, and they're usually done by 7.30. Members fly in any time between 2 and 4 meet with their staff, and then they go straight to voting. So it's very rare you're going to get a meeting unless they happen to be there early in the morning. Fly-out dates, the same rule of thumb. Um, usually they'll say last vote 3.30 on a Thursday or Friday. That's the very last time um, where votes will occur for members. I guarantee you 80% of the time, they're done by noon because everybody wants to leave and head back home. So you're not going to be able to meet with them because they're wrapping up their morning and their week. They want to vote and they want to get out of Dodge. So the best time to make your request is during the week. Um, if you happen to know what committees your members are and you do a little research, for example, my boss, um, he's on Judiciary and um, Foreign Affairs. If you look at their committee schedules, which is also available, uh, you'll notice that most of their meetings are in the morning. So for instance, I don't take any requests for anything other than the afternoon because mm -hmm. my boss's time in the morning is filled with committee hearings, uh, markups, and then of course the Democratic whips and caucuses that happen. Each member is different um, depending on what committee they're on and of course whether they're Democrat or Republican that that says for itself um, but other than that I, I think that gave you the, the good rundown <laughs> yeah I think that that information is very helpful to hear especially from someone who you know deals with it every single day and I'm going to open it up for any questions people might have so if you have a question for Alex Roca uh, please press one on your keypad so I know to call on you. Um, and Alex, that insight that you gave about sort of their normal schedule with mornings being, you know, voting time, afternoons being when these meetings are typically held, is there one time in particular that you found 
is sort of the optimum time if someone's doing this for the first time is there you know two three four is the, is there one that's usually um, better or does well, it sort of just vary it 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 varies only because depending on what they have scheduled that week for votes some days there are two series of votes which usually mm-hmm. takes place between one and two, and then the second series anywhere is between three and five. Um, those are the times that votes occur. Um, all the Democrats, their meetings, their caucuses, and their whip meetings are in the morning. So between nine and ten, you're not going to be able to get in. So if you, if you're the member, doesn't mind meeting at eight thirty in the morning, you can you can make that ask. But I know most members are there from nine to six. My boss will meet with people sometimes earlier in the morning. Um, Otherwise, their lunch hour is pretty much theirs. so when I usually I usually schedule my meetings between one and two, um, because my boss's subcommittee hearing is between two and three thirty. So then I pick up again three thirty to six o'clock. Okay, great. Um, and we've got but, someone with with their hand up, um, Martin. Okay. I'm going to call on you, Martin. Where are you calling in from, um, and what's your question? I'm calling from Silver Spring, Maryland. Great. Can you hear me? Thanks, Martin. Yep, yes. I can hear you loud yes. and clear. Uh, is there an advantage to making your first appointment with the staff rather than with the congressman? Oh, well, that's a given. Most of the time, uh, depending on the issues and where they fall on the congressperson's um, important, like if you did one to five on their ladder, most of the time, if it's, if it's something that they really, if it's a cause that they're very interested in, they'll, they'll try to meet with you. Otherwise, it's going to be with senior staff or with one of their LAs. Like in our office, we have the chief of staff, and we also happen to have a deputy Chief of Staff, and then we have the LD who handles all the legislative aid under that person, and each one has a set of responsibilities and um, subject matters. So depending on the subject matter in each office, that one particular person usually staffs the congressman for a meeting or they'll take the meeting themselves. And you can make the act either way. So would it to ask whether I want to meet with the congressperson or with someone in the staff or would that decision be made in the congressperson's office? You would make the ask for both because it wouldn't hurt. And if you get lucky, you get the congressperson. And if not, you'll hopefully you'll get at least the staff person in there, and they'll at least meet with you. Our rule of thumb was we try to meet with everybody, whether they're in our district or not. Generally, how much in advance would you advise we we would ask for the uh, the meeting? Um, I have people asking me now for June and July. Okay. Great. So Thanks. It, Thanks. It, 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 they may not answer you right away. I like to, if I can't answer within the week, I try to send a generic email out. I have your email. I'm not working on July's calendar, but as soon as I do, I'll be able to let you know, you know, whether or not I can fit you in. Great. Thanks so much for the question. I'm now going to go over to, Dennis Latero. Hey, Dennis, you are unmuted. Where are you calling in from, and what's your question? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, calling in from Boston right now. Um, my question is if you're, if the average time with the congressperson is about 15 minutes, um, how do you suggest that that meeting be structured given the subject matter that we want to bring to their attention or ask for their support on? Uh, well, I would say, like, Cliff Notes, that's 
school bullet points the 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 main part of what you're there for uh, usually back up with some kind of paperwork or writings or any particular a lot of times they come in and give a binder or a folder or even just a one page note here's what it's all about but basically we really want to talk about HR blah blah HR blah blah and and you just just hit that what's the most important thing for you you're not going to be able to talk a lot about everything so what key issues to you is what you need to direct at because you have to also remember they may run late. Your 15 minutes may now be five minutes. Sometimes it's walk with the congressman as he's going to vote. Um, it, it has to remain flexible. So it's not always going to be sit down and, and we get 15 square minutes. It's hopefully that day runs smooth and everyone runs on time. Great. Thank you so much for the question, Dennis. I'm now going to turn it over to Marie Henselder Kimmel. Hey, Marie, you are unmuted. Where are you calling in from, and what's your question? Hi, Azer. I'm calling from Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and my question is this. Alex, you said that usually the um, meetings uh, optimally are four to six um, voters, constituents at a time. So if we have a group where it's larger than that, should we try to schedule two back-to-back -back time slots because everybody's coming to Washington and is excited to be able to meet with at least the aide, if not the congressperson? Um, and how would we best handle that? Uh, that's exactly the best way to handle it. I have sometimes groups of about 30 people, and if it's – a big enough group, depending on who it is, um, with advance notice, you can if you can find somebody from a congressperson's office to sponsor, they can get a room where you can hold all your meetings in one room and schedule the members to come in 15 minutes at a time. If that that's really for people that have been doing it for a while on the Hill. Um, for those of you that are new at it. I would suggest splitting your, your group up into two, threes, or fours, however, however, you know, maximum six people to a group, and have a leader in each one, split the members, go alphabet, look at their rooms. Um, remember, we have three rooms. We have Cannon, Rayburn, and, um, oh, I just went blank. Longworth. Longworth. Longworth, thank you. Um, Cannon and Longworth are on opposite sides. Rayburn's in the center. So when you're scheduling meetings, you have to take into consideration where you are and what room. And it could take you a good 15 minutes to get from building to building. Hmm. So you, you want to try to look at a sheet of paper with all the members who you want to meet what rooms they are, and try to coordinate the groups to stick to each building so that they're not running back and forth. They're just staying in one building and just going up and down. Great. Great. Thanks for that question, Marie. And I'm now going to pass it over to Peter Pinso. Peter, you're unmuted. Uh, what's your question? Where are you calling in from? Hi, I'm calling in from uh, Beverly, Massachusetts. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, so uh, say we get five minutes, what is the kind of best possible outcome uh, that we could kind of expect out of those five minutes? Um, yeah, thanks. Um, you, you know, it depends on the congressperson and how passionate they are about the subject matter. Like I said, um, right now my boss, with as many things as he loves on his plate, when there's someone coming in about gun issues and school violence, um, that's on the top of the plate right now. Um, so he'll, they'll give him, he'll give them a little more time with that, addressing the issues. And the staffers are there. And basically what happens is the staffer takes notes and you go to them and say, this is what we're looking for. Can we can we do something? Can we make a change? Can we can you join with another member and submit a new bill? Or can, here are some amendments to a certain bill. 
you need to come in and tell them what it is that you're looking for them to do and let them tell you whether or not it's doable or what they do is they meet with their staffer later to discuss each of those meetings they've had for the day and then there you can follow up with the staffer and say you know we thank you for meeting you know here you know here are the issues we address and just hit the bullet points on the email or a letter and and wait to see what correspondence is sent back most of the time they do hear you um there's a lot of things, there's a lot of movable parts, but that's why most of them have about 18 employees working for them. So we're all doing something. Mm -hmm. Great. That makes a lot of sense. And we've got time for one, maybe two more questions, but it looks like Sam Daly Harris has his hand up. Sam, I'm going to unmute you. Uh, where are you calling in from and what's your question? Yes, hi there. Thanks so much. I'm in uh, Princeton, New Jersey. Uh, our lobby day is Monday, June 25th, and it would seem that many members of Congress will not be there and will often be meeting with staff that day. The question is, is it fair to, to really go to that meeting and really pursue meeting back in the district in July or August with the member of Congress, him or herself, after meeting the staff on June 25th in D.C.? You can absolutely make a follow-up request for the district. Um, this, this is a, you, you got to remember what cycle we're in. In the two years that members are in Congress, this year is going to be a busy year. Um, so if you do want to follow up, I suggest you do it right away after your meeting. If you feel the need, you trust the need to that staffer that you would like to follow up with the district person, get the name of the district director and follow up with them and CC the staffer and that way everybody's on the same page and they'll try to get you in. Great. Um, thank you, Alex. Thank you, Sam. And we've got, looks like one more hand up. Um, Michelle, I'm gonna pass it over to you. You're unmuted. Where are you calling in from and what's your question? I'm calling in from Lubbock, Texas, and my question is really about talking to the staff or, or whatever at the congressman's office. When I've called our congressman's office in D.C., on more than one occasion, they, the staff will tell me I'm saying the wrong thing to them, that I don't, you know, I don't want to ask him not to do this. How, how should we handle that? What do you like, mean? Literally. Like, like I've called in and said I want... Um, Congressman Arrington to vote no on HR, whatever, you know. And then they sit there and argue with you that your opinion is wrong. And this has happened to me three different times at Congressman Arrington's office by three different people. And it's really aggravating for them to sit there and try to tell me my opinion is wrong. And how, how should we go about – and I'm sorry this is about Lobby Day, but th th this would also be the same thing, though, when we're trying to express our – opinion to our congressman as a constituent and then their staff sits there and tells you you shouldn't have that opinion how do we go about handling something like that yeah that's a that's a good question um sometimes we get calls in the office and they're exactly right up the congressman's alley and they're agreeable but there are those times where we get undesirable calls um, because they really go off the deep end, but we're kind enough to just listen. I hate to say this, but a lot of offices do not. Um, I don't. I don't know how we can change that, except maybe putting it into writing. And I, I really don't know. In our office, we accept calls from everybody. Some callers are longer and winded than others. We try to take down their names. We have a uh, a system in the office where you can actually log in calls. So you, you can put their name and phone number and address or, or email. And um, we try to put in what it is that they're disgruntled about or agreeable about. And, and we send it up and it goes to Washington, D.C. for a database. If that person ever calls again, we can easily retrace it because, oh, here's Mr. Smith. He called us last year about so-and-so. 
That's how our office does it. I don't know how all the other ones do, but I do know um, there are some offices out there that will even hang up on you. I, I, it's bad behavior. It's not what our boss allows in our office. Um, it just comes from above. I, I, don't, I really don't know how we can change it, except it has to come from the congressperson themselves. They, they depict on the way that they handle people and constituents and they remember that they work for the people, and those that don't, well, that that you can see it in in how you're getting treated, because that would not be allowed in our office. Great, thank you so much, Alex. Uh, that's about the time we have here for questions. But I, I really just want to thank you for being on the call tonight. We spend a whole lot of time talking about, you know, why we're doing this work, why we're fighting to get big money out of politics and restore political equality so our government works for people. Um, but, you know, the time spent on the nitty gritty of how to actually develop these relationships with members of Congress and importantly, how to actually get these meetings consistently is a huge piece. You know, this is sort of logistically how we do it and, and what everyone really needs to hear. So huge thank you to you for being on the call. It's, it's much appreciated and much valued. Uh, my pleasure. Sorry I came in late. <laughs> it is all right. It is all right. I'm 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 now really thrilled and excited to pass it over to Cynthia Esposito, who's the co-founder of the New York City American Promise Association, started just about two months ago, and they're already expanding a high-powered team and have meetings lined up for Lobby Day on the 25th. Hey, Cynthia, thanks so much for being on the call. Thank you, Razor. Hello, everyone. As Azer just said, my name is Cynthia Esposito, and Azer asked me to share my experience in scheduling a meeting with my member of Congress. I used my three P's approach, which is be persistent, be positive, and be polite, which I'll share with you now. I am the co-founder, along with Connie Vasquez, of the newly formed New York City APA group. Prior to my involvement with American Promise, I have never directly met with my political representatives. My family and I are lifelong Democrats, but by no means are any of us activists. When I heard about the National Citizen Leadership Conference and Lobby Day, I immediately signed up for the conference and I agreed to meet with my member of Congress on June 25th. I heard several comments in various American Promise conference calls about the potential difficulty in meeting face-to-face -face with my member of Congress, but I'll tell you, it was surprisingly easy for me to schedule the meeting. I called my member of Congress, Gerald Nadler's office. I left a very pleasant voicemail message on a Thursday, and I decided to give him two business days to respond to me. So I waited on Friday, didn't hear. I waited on Monday, I didn't hear. And at noon on Monday, I called back again, and I left another very polite message just saying that I had called, just checking to see if you received my message. And that afternoon, Monday afternoon, a staff member called me back and told me to directly contact David Greengrass via email. So I sent an informative and polite email to David Greengrass that same afternoon. And then the next day, David responded to me to say that Representative Nadler could not meet with me, but he, David Greengrass, would be happy to meet with me between 12 and 2 p.m. on June 25th. So I booked the meeting with him at noon on June 25th. I offered to send him an agenda in advance. I also politely let him know that I am personally paying for an extra hotel night in D.C. with a 72-hour cancellation window in order to meet with him on the 25th. And my goal was to ensure that he would think twice before canceling on me at the last minute. My immediate next step after I meet with him on the 25th will be to schedule a face-to-face -face meeting in New York City with Representative Nadler. My three lessons learned from this experience correspond with my personal three Ps. Number one, be persistent. Just do it. Don't delay. Don't obsess over the task at hand. Number two, be polite. Always be friendly and respectful. 
I spent all my childhood summers on a farm in Pennsylvania where everyone always used to say you can catch more flies with honey than you can with vinegar. And apparently what I'm learning is that is as true for politics as it is on the farm. Number three, be positive. So just always assume you will succeed. Do not fall into the trap of thinking someone else's negative experience will also happen to you. I personally think worrying is a waste of precious time that can be devoted to making a real change. So in summary, I always focus on my three Ps, be persistent, be polite, be positive. And I'd like to end by thanking all of you, my fellow citizens out there, for joining tonight's call. To me, it is so exciting to work locally while knowing that I'm a part of something much bigger. And I'm really looking forward to meeting many of you in D.C. in June. And when we do meet, I promise the first happy hour drink is on me. Back to you, <laughs> Incredible, Cynthia. Well, well, I'm excited to see you even more now in D.C. in June, and and thanks for everything that you and the APA out in New York City are doing. It's really great to hear from you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And and as you said, you know, that positivity and can-do attitude, you know, is really how we're going to win, and and it's also going to be how we break through a lot of people's feelings of apathy and cynicism and continue to awaken really the silent majority of people in this country who are fed up with money in politics, but don't think that anything can actually be done about it. And it's really why Lobby Day is such an exciting opportunity and and one to really take advantage of. And now I'm going to pass it over to Susan Muller, the Events and Operations Director at American Promise, who's going to give a quick overview of the National Citizen Leadership Conference and our lobby day before taking a few questions from from folks. So as she's talking, be thinking of questions about the NCLC and lobby day and press one on your keypad to go ahead and raise your hand. Hey, Susan, thanks for being here tonight. Hi, Azer. Thanks for the intro. Mm -hmm. For anybody who, who may have missed the last call, our National Citizen Leadership Conference is being held this year at the Washington Hilton in Washington, D.C., June 22nd to the 25th. We expect 500 citizens, elected officials, and leaders from all walks of life to attend. Our first National Citizen Leadership Conference in 2016 brought in more than 300 Americans from 40 states together for inspiration and action across partisan lines. Feedback from the NCLC attendees was extremely positive with comments such as, quote, I, I feel hope and like I know what to do for the first time in a long time. Another quote, it was a conference like none I've been to before and one I hope to be at next year. And uh, one more quote was, we came back really charged up with a ton of context, all with the same passion of restoring our democracy. Thank you. So dynamic APAs from Montclair, New Jersey, and from Santa Fe, New Mexico, formed from the momentum their members took home with them from our first NCLC in 2016. And this year's conference should even be more impactful. We're thrilled to have added Lobby Day on Monday the 25th this year. We'll be providing training, role playing, and a chance to have citizens gather and learn from one another throughout the conference. Just of a few of our 2018 speakers are Bill Moyers, journalist and former White House Press Secretary for President Lyndon Johnson, Nina Turner, President of Our Revolution, Ben Cohn from Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream and Head Stamper at the Stamp Stampede, and Ellen Weintraub, Commissioner of the FEC. I really hope you can join us in June for the conference and lobby day. I'm going to pass it back to Asia and open it up to Q&A. Great. Thank you so much, Susan. And thank you for really everything you're doing in putting this huge, huge, huge event together. If, if anyone has any questions about Lobby Day and the NCLC in general, uh, Susan's really the mastermind behind it, pulling all the strings. And this is a really good opportunity um, to, you know, ask a question right to the person who knows the most about the event. So if you've got any questions, go ahead and press one on your keypad. I'll give folks a couple seconds here. It looks like we've got someone with their hand up 
it is Tyler. Tyler, you are off mute. Go ahead. Where are you calling in from, and what's your question? The question is, how do you know where other people are going from your area or for your congressman or here? And what area do you cover? You cover area where you live, where you vote. How you? Yep. That's that's a great question, Tyler. And and I think I can take that one. You know, you can find out who your member of Congress is by going to house.gov, typing in your zip code. But I think what might have been your question is, you know, how do I know if there are other people from my geographic area who are going to the NCLC and Lobby Day? who may have already scheduled meetings. Um, and really, as people are registering for the conference, um, we're going to be figuring out geographically who's looped in with one another, making sure that none of these congressional meetings are double booked. Um, and it's why it's so important that if you are planning on scheduling a meeting for Lobby Day, reach out to me personally. Um, my email is azorc, A-Z-O-R-C, and AmericanPromise.net, and I'll do just that. I'll connect you with folks who are in your area um, so you can loop up beforehand um, so you're not meeting for the first time there. So thanks for that question, and I'm going to turn it over to John, who also has his hand up. John, you're unmuted. Where are you calling in from, and what's your question? Hi, everyone. This is John Selman up in Juneau, Alaska. And... uh I'm not expecting to make it down to, for the lobby day on June 25th, but I do intend to lobby my, I have a very small delegation. Uh, you just stay in the union. We've got like a third of the, the size of the uh, contiguous U.S. down there, but we only have three delegates, two senators and a representative. And I will be intending to... Uh, lobby those reps when they get to town. I have been uh, involved with the, uh, uh, like, uh, move to amend and um, public citizen. My gosh. Uh, for a long time now, I've moved to amend since uh, Citizens United. But uh, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, I uh Intend to uh, um, I, can, I do all the time now on a regular basis, verbally and on in, in a written word, I lobby my uh, reps. But when they get to town, I would like to set some kind of a uh, appointment. I have a uh, organization with Moms Demand Action, which, uh, by the way, I was in St. Louis last year. Um, but uh, there's uh, at least six or seven people that I can uh, uh, contact to uh, corroborate a meeting with my legislator or my uh, senators when they come to town. Um, I'm, I'm sorry I won't be able to make it down for June 25th or 4th, but... Uh, my my uh, uh, desire is to um, get get that uh, meeting set up. What mm-hmm. uh, what would it take uh, besides just? And they all know me. I'm, all the aides uh, in D.C. by uh, for my um, tendency to spin off into uh, uh, dissertations on uh, good and evil, I guess, but. Uh, <laughs> They all know me, and uh, I could contact them, but I also uh, have a contact here in, at the delegation office in Juneau uh, that uh, um, I'm not sure who would be able, better to set up a meeting with in district, though. That's like, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a good question, John. It sounds like you're doing a whole lot, and you've been doing it for some time, which is fantastic. and. You know, I think your question is sort of, you know, what's the best way to stay in action? And, you know, I think the simple answer is just, you know, keep keep having those follow-up meetings. And I'm sure every elected official is a little bit different and you've got your own personal 
relationship with them. Um, but it, but it sounds like you're having success meeting with them and any of those insights that you might be able to take from Alex, who we heard from earlier. Um, it sounds like you might have even more um, frequent and more productive meetings if you apply some of those. Um, so I, I just wanted to reiterate, you know, one question that was brought up because I, I think it's a really important one. And that was, you know, how will I know who from my area is going? And I just want to say it again, that it, that a huge part of the organizing work, myself and the other citizen empowerment coordinator, will boy gather, will be doing leading up to lobby day is going to be connecting people who live close together. And, and as I mentioned, if you already have a meeting scheduled, please let me know. Uh, send the time, location, and member of Congress or the aid to me by email, and I'll loop folks in as appropriate. Um, Susan, I don't think we have any more hands up yep. with maybe one exception, but anything you want to add that you feel like hasn't been covered here? Well, I also I also wanted to mention, I don't know if um, Tyler before was saying, how do I connect? We have on Saturday the 23rd and Sunday the 24th, which is at the Washington Hilton, we're going to be having plenaries um, and breakout sessions that are going to be talking about the 28th Amendment, talking about Lobby Day, doing bridging the divide, environmental impacts, and and what people are doing, and a lot of time for people to interact with one another. So um, you'll be very well prepared for Lobby Day on that Monday and learn much more about the 28th Amendment and um, uh, the work that's going on uh, from many different groups, including American Promise. We're also going to have a app called Kuva. And all of the attendees are in that app with the name, and you can um, ping each other and um, text each other and make make contact. So we're going to be very, very connected and interactive um, those two days before the the um, 25th um, with with citizens and everybody that's at the conference. So um, it'll, uh, um, I wanted to make sure everybody understood that too. Great. Thanks, Susan. That's a great point. You know, Lobby Day isn't just going to happen on June 25th. Of course, that's the date for it. But the conference, you know, on the 23rd and especially the 24th is going to be gearing up for it um, mm -hmm. you know, as we prepare and as we talk about it and do trainings on it beforehand. So these, these calls are a really great way to get prepared leading up to it. But, you know, what will be even better is being all together at the conference, really, really practicing with one another. So thank you, Susan. Um, thank and, you. And, yep. and again, I'd, I'd encourage everyone to go to the NCLC website where all this information is. It's www.citizenleaders.us where you can learn all about the conference and register for it as well. I'm now going to pass it over to our last special guest, you've already heard from him a little bit, Sam Daly-Harris, who's the founder of Results and the founder of Civic Courage, who led his first Lobby Day in 1984 and has been to Lobby Days every single year since. He's also the author of Reclaiming Our Democracy, and it's my pleasure to welcome Sam onto the call. Hey, Sam, how are you? Great. Thanks, Azer. Very good. I think my section will be of help to our friend in Juneau, Alaska, who I think was asking a bit more about what do I do, how do I do it, how do I get my folks together. So in this section, my goal is to outline our commitment to preparing you to have really successful congressional meetings on Lobby Day and beyond, not just in D.C., but back home. Here's some of what we'll provide. And this is important. Let me start with the training document. If you go to the conference website, www.citizenleaders.us, then go to the top of that page and click on Lobby Day. After the third paragraph on that page is a link titled, Click Here to Download Our Citizen Lobby Day Training Material. There you'll find a six-page document telling you everything you need to know about getting a meeting, planning a meeting, rehearsing a meeting, and having a great meeting with your U.S. rep, U.S. senator, 
or their staff in D.C. or back home, wherever home is, Juneau, Alaska, or wherever. Next, this is our second conference call to help prepare you for Lobby Day, June 25th. And, of course, this one is focused on how do you get a meeting with your member of Congress or their staff. In late May, we'll have another call like this one, but with a special focus on planning and rehearsing the Lobby Day meeting itself with your members of Congress or staff. What's the agenda for the meeting? How do you divide up the parts during the meeting? In early to mid-June, we'll have a fourth and final call like this focused on practicing parts of the meeting and answering your question on having a successful Lobby Day. During the conference, during the NCLC, we'll have two plenary sessions for further training on having successful meetings. We'll have you sit together in your Lobby Day group. We'll have an APA come to the front of the room and demonstrate the first two sections of a lobby meeting and then have you practice in your Lobby Day group. After some questions and discussion, we'll have another APA come to the front of the room and demonstrate the next two sections of a lobby meeting, and then we'll have you practice those sections again in your lobby day group. Then we'll take some more questions. We'll also urge your lobby day group to find other times during the conference to get together and practice on your own. Maybe it's during a breakfast or dinner break. So if you want to begin scheduling and planning your June 25th Lobby Day meeting now, here's what you need to know. Azer, as he said, will be gathering information on the Lobby Day meetings APAs have set up or are, set up, or are setting up. If you're not in an APA and you want to set up a meeting with your U.S. Rep and Senators, write Azer first and let him know the meeting you want to set up, and he'll let you know if someone is already setting up those meetings. If no one else is setting them up, he'll let you know if you can be the liaison, you can go ahead and set it up. Remember, you can get the Lobby Day training doc on setting up, planning, and practicing the meeting by going to the conference website, www.citizenleaders.com. Dot us go to the top of the page click on lobby day and after the third paragraph there's a link titled click here to download the citizen lobby day training material i've said a lot and i've left a lot out so let's go to questions if you have a question on any aspect of lobby day press one on your keypad and when azer calls on you let us know where you're calling from all right. Thank you, Sam. It looks like Martin has his hand back up. Martin, I'm going to call on you. Uh, where are you calling in from again, and what's your question? Uh, yeah, I'm calling from uh, Silver Spring, and I, I'm in Maryland, where both the uh, both senators and my representative, Jamie Raskin, whose name is probably familiar. Absolutely. Uh, they're all very they're they're all very sympathetic to the cause, so I'm wondering uh, how can I optimize lobby day? Uh, okay, great. This is a fabulous this is a fabulous question, and it's the flip side of the woman who is saying I call my congressman's office and they tell me that I'm wrong. So we're going to deal <laughs> with this le- next month. But the issue is a thing we call the champion scale. If my member of Congress is opposed. Our gig is to move them from opposed to neutral. And if they're neutral, our gig is to move them from neutral to being a supporter. Now, you're saying either my members of Congress, House, and Senate are supporters, or maybe they're even advocates. The point is we want to move them up the ladder. So maybe they're really big supporters, but we want them to start advocating. I'm making this up because I don't know them individually. But you might say, I'm thrilled with your support for these amendments to overturn Citizens United, I'm wondering if you'd be willing to write an op-ed, we could help write it, to publish in the local paper uh, uh, to really educate the public, uh, A, on your support, and B, on the need 
to overturn Citizens United. Or I'm wondering if you'd be willing to have a town hall meeting. We could bring in some other speakers, if you like, uh, of a panel on overturning Citizens United. So the point is you want to look for asks that are beyond co-sponsoring XYZ bill because they're already supportive of of that. They're already co-sponsor. You want them to take a higher level action. Is that helpful? Very, very. And uh, as you probably know, Jamie Raskin has already done a lot of that. Big time, yes. Uh, Yeah, Yeah, big time. Uh, But we have to look for ways... He's he's a big time supporter, uh, uh, so we want Lee to look for ways for him to swing out even more. Although he's doing a fantastic job, we'd like some more. And the senators, I think, can do even more too. Absolutely. Great. Okay. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, Martin. Uh, it looks like we've got one more person with their hand up. Michelle, I'm going to unmute you. Where are you calling in from, and what's your question? I don't hear Michelle yet. I don't either. Michelle, are you there? And, and maybe it was her, her own her phone might yeah. be oh, yes, on mute. Yes, I'm sorry. Oh. Yes, I'm sorry. Oh. No um, problem. Once again, I'm the one who said that I had the um, congressman that their staff is rude, um, and I'm always very professional, very polite, and I have called and said thank you for when he's done something. But there, there's just that issue. Is 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 there going to be training for this? I'm not going to be able to go, but I do contact my senator and senators and congressmen quite frequently and I really feel like in Texas we're really getting cheated by staff in all their offices of my three that I contact um yeah well here's the thing let me just say yeah yeah let me just say a couple of things I really urge you to go online uh to lobby day sorry to the conference website and lobby day and click on that and then look at the link after the third paragraph because there's a document that really begins to talk about this issue of a kind of what do I do with opponents and how do I act and how do I be uh, to move them up the scale from opposed to eventually neutral and okay. then maybe neutral to supporter. So we're going to deal this, with this next month, but if you go to that document, the Lobby Day document, you're going to have a, a bunch of insights there that I think will be great. useful. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Michelle. Um, it looks like we've answered all the questions here, Sam. I don't know if there's anything you'd like to end with or you think that could really be emphasized one more time. No, I think the bottom line is, you know, they need to hear from you. Your representative and senators need to hear from you. And if it's Monday the 25th and you can only meet with the aides, no problem. Have a fabulous meeting with the aides, and then in July and August, get in face-to-face back in the district with the member of Congress or senator himself or herself. So we can do this, and you know we're, we're really committed to training you on these calls and in the Lobby Day va- document and at the conference NCLC itself. And so I just hope to see as many of you as possible there and really take this to the next level. Thanks to everyone. Great. Thank you, Sam. Um, and, and, you know, the last the last thing I'll add in before we sign off here on time is there are a number of people on these calls who are already in American Promise Associations. And, you know, for each APA, we're going through – you know, in-depth trainings on Citizen Lobby Day. And, you know, one of the things that came to mind is, you know, the very first thing that we're practicing is we're actually sort of simulating these meetings with elected officials in preparation for them is we're finding something to thank them for right off the bat to sort of, you know, build a relationship. That's really what we're doing. And something as simple as thanking them, you know, goes a long way in the long run. And I really liked what Cynthia said earlier. I sort of want to end on this note that we'll catch more flies with honey than vinegar. Um, It's so true in politics and it's sort of a refreshing lens to uh, enter into the political realm where it does seem so polarized. Um, And we're meant to think that we have so little in common 
with our fellow American when money and politics is one of the issues that people really can agree on and it has a really high potential um, to be uplifting and ultimately really productive and foundationally important for our country. Um, so thank you everyone for being on the call. It's 930 here. I'm actually going to unmute everyone so we can all quickly say goodbye and everyone it's been fantastic once again being with you and, and thank you so much have a good night everyone bye 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 bye